Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. Now, it's, uh, I've done re videos on these repairs and diagnostics before, but this one is more of a, an awareness sort of video. So, if you've got one of these vehicles here, uh, Land Rover Discovery Sport or a Range Rover Vogue, I just want to like to give you some advice. Now, this vehicle came to me with a P2463 code about six months ago and a Knox Exceedance code just because the AdBlue was left to go a little bit too low. Now, I gave him a quote on cleaning the DPF. He said he was going to have a think about it and went away. Now, in all fairness, I know I'm not the cheapest person in the country to do DPF cleans. Like, there's people like Halfords Auto Centres who are offering DPF cleaning for silly money like about something like 85 pound but it you know whether or not that works i let their own people i'm not gonna i'm not gonna slate people online but this diesel exhaust fluid sign here uh exhaust filter full which is lies that the exhaust is not full so main story is okay the customers went away um, he said he was going to have a think about it to me, but he didn't. What he done is he he's obviously found someone a little bit cheaper to do the the DPF uh, work on it. But what they've done is I've just asked him, uh, has anyone done a force region on it? He said, yeah, they've done a couple of force regions on it. Now before I plug it, plugged it in, I said, okay, if they've done force regions, it's likely that that we're not. I'm not going to be able to now clean your DPF on it. So I've got my diagnostic machine here. I've already plugged it in. And I'm using the launch Eurotab 3 scan tool here. We'll read the fault codes. We have a P2463, which was what he originally had, yeah. And a Nox Exceedance. Now, if you looked at my other videos, it's quite common that I can cure them by just just filling up the ad blue and resetting it. Um, this is a new one, catalyst, threshold, right? Exhaust gas temperature sensor now is also a new one. I don't know what they've done there. I don't know if I'm, I haven't even looked under the car, but it's possible again, like I've seen before. Maybe they've unplugged it um, to do their DPF clean. I know Halfords and these quick fit centers like to go down that route of opening one of these and getting in there. Um, and it does always chuck a code. Now he's got a P2002. This is going to be the main issue here. P2002 now means that usually the DPF's damaged and it's usually accompanied by this code here PO49B00 so if you've got this code even if you haven't got a DPF code if you've got this code please check your DPF before you spend money on replacing that now he's had the exhaust um, recirculation valve replaced along with the cooler and the filter yeah and the codes come back so why is the code come back codes come back because his DPF is damaged right here that's why, because it it is all connected together. So if you've got no flow from the DPF, it's going to affect the flow at the low pressure EGR. Low pressure EGR again, insufficient detected, insufficient flow. So we've got a lot of codes. We've got these four. We have got these. We've got all of these codes. Okay. Okay, so if I come back from here, go to live data, um, we're going to look at differential pressure. Um, we'll just type in soot, just out of curiosity. Particle filter soot mass. Okay, so we have 46 grams of soot, which is clearly, that's calculated, yeah, which is clearly way off because we have zero pressure in the DPF here switch it over to HPAs or millibars there which is more accurate a smaller number now if we hold the revs up around sort of 3000 rpm on this what have we got 20 millibars of pressure so this DPF the restriction is too low so what that means is the DPF is now cracked after it's had a force regeneration So like I said, even if you've got the PO49B code, do please check the pressure of your DPF before you replace it because you're probably going to be wasting money. Um, now, go back. We'll talk about here what he needs to do to get this fixed. So to get this fixed, he's going to need a new DPF. Um, 
according to that it needs a new catalyst but n- not likely um, so it's going to need a new DPF and these AdBlue issues sorting out so the NOx maybe just fill up the AdBlue might cure that but we need to look at that a bit further it's going to need an exhaust temperature sensor and these codes should then go away for the exhaust flow exhaust recirculation flow they, they should sort of cure themselves once you've got a new DPF fitted but what I can say is I know people who've had this DPF replaced three times within the space of a couple of years and this it does eventually come back with either this code or this so there is no permanent fix on this engine 2 litre diesel ingenium now of course it's up to the customer here what he wants to do if he wants to replace his DPF and maybe an exhaust uh, temperature sensor we'll have a look at the live data for that ok so we've got the exhaust temperature sensors here flagged up well number 2 has just gone from 0 let's just give it some revs up and down see what's happening so we have got some reading on there it's not completely off So sensor 3 is going to be the furthest one down the DPF, which is going to be now the coldest area of the DPF because there is no restriction. So it's likely that that is just getting a very low reading, which is maybe throwing off the DPF code. So what I'm doing is I'm just giving the vehicle some revs up and down to try and increase the temperature. So I can see that sensor is working. It's moving. Exhaust gas temperature 3. So... Let me just go back and read it. Yeah, plausibility. So it's basically saying that, you know, it's there's a plausibility there. You know, the the temperature is too low. Temperature is too low there, so that's why it's given the fault. Again, I think that would just fix be fixed with the new DPF. So here is the new DPF there. Or sorry, the old DPF underneath the vehicle. Um, that is the unit that's going to need to be replaced. Otherwise, he's going to have to go down other routes I suppose um, he wants to take it back to wherever he's bought it from and maybe start some sort of procedures to try and get some of his money back just having a look underneath the car here I don't know what's been going on there but someone's done some sort of a little boss up wiring job there Now one of the easy main telltale signs that there is damage on the DPF for these vehicles is to run your finger under there. Now if it looks like that, you've definitely got DPF damage. So one thing I realise I am not very good at is explaining things correctly, but um, basically the EGR cooler filter does block up on these. He's had the EGR and the cooler replaced and it's saying it's blocked again. Now, it can... It can be blocked again um, but basically uh, the whole point I'm trying to make is of this video if you've got a P049B code don't just replace your EGR cooler you have to replace the DPF first then if you've still got a P049B code yeah replace the, the cooler filter because once your DPF is now passing soot that soot is going to make its way back up to the EGR cooler it's also going to make its way into the turbo and eventually kill that as well because it goes right back through your intake system so I hope I've explained that correctly EGR cooler gets blocked because the DPF is damaged so before you replace the EGR cooler replace your DPF um, you could just replace the DPF first and then see how the EGR cooler behaves it may not be blocked it might just be that because you've got an airflow correlation and um, so hope that helps okay that's all done so hope that helps i'll see you in the next video